Secondly, the budget measures did not tackle the root cause of the problems of job security and a rising cost of living, which still afflict Singaporeans today, especially the middle class. There is an urgent need to rebalance the local foreign worker mix in our job market. Mr. Yo Lam Kyung, the former GIC chief economist and one of the founders of FOSG, or the Future of Singapore Group, has pointed out, quote, our most fundamental economic weaknesses stem from our structural excessive dependence on foreign capital and foreign labor, unquote. So in preparing for a post-COVID future, should we not seize this opportunity to reduce our reliance on foreign labor? I was disappointed that the budget only adjusted the s pass quota for the manufacturing sector for managing the local foreign worker mix. Currently, foreign workers account for an on the average 40% of our workforce at all levels, whether work permit, s pass or EP holders. And many of the foreign workers have even taken the helm of our local companies. The growing numbers of displaced PMETs joining the ranks of private hire drivers and gig workers is the best final evidence of the shortcomings of the current employment and immigration policies. Mr. Speaker, I would like to make a clarification following um, Honourable Mr. Leo Man Wai's speech. Um, Mr. Leo Man Wai, in his speech, suggested that um, foreigners are taking helm of companies in Singapore at the expense of locals, and he suggested that there should be a levy on all EP holders. Um, well, the Singapore government reviews the EP qualifying criteria uh, constantly. We just did that last year as well. And uh, we do that so that there is constant rebalancing of uh, the foreign and local talent mix in Singapore. And the intent is to strengthen the Singaporean core. A blanket levy on EP holders is a signal to foreign investors um, that we don't quite welcome them bringing in um, their own talent. I also recall that um, in his earlier speech during the debate on the motion of thanks to the President, um, he lamented that DBS was still um, without a Singaporean CEO. And even after hearing the clarification that the CEO of DBS is indeed a Singaporean, even though not born in Singapore, um, he maintained his position. I cannot help but come to the conclusion that uh, Mr. Leong and the PSP do not believe that Singapore should be an open city connected to the world, having locals and foreigners complementing each other. And he wants Singapore to close up for the top jobs to, given, to be given to Singaporeans only. Mr. Speaker, we have seen in many other mature democracies where anti-foreigner sentiments are being played out and politicized. And we also know that many countries are grappling with the challenges of globalization. So are we. But we must try to strike a balance between globalization and building our own identity in Singapore, welcoming foreign talent and building our own talent at the same time. And our future depends on it. If we start telling companies that they can invest, but can only employ Singaporeans for the top jobs, we will end up chasing some of them away and thousands of good jobs for Singaporeans will be lost as well. And going by Mr. Leong's logic, Singaporeans who are working overseas then won't be given top jobs outside Singapore. In my maiden speech in the parliament, I spoke about strengthening the Singaporean core and being very proud of Singapore as an open and multicultural society. We must do our best to equip our Singaporeans with the right skills and also the attributes to thrive in a vibrant and open economy. Singapore is a global city-state. Global companies with a presence in Singapore require a diverse team of foreign and local talent. 
Mr. Leongman Wai and PSP must know that. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, thank you, MOS, for the, uh, for the comments. Uh, may I respond? Um, PSP is in total agreement to the fact that we are a, an open global city, state. Okay? So we are in favour of having foreign talents or foreigners to come in to complement us. However, what we are pointing out, as in my maiden speech in September last year, we need a rebalancing. And we think the rebalancing is going on too slowly. And now, more than 40% of the foreigners are in our workforce, and many of them have taken over uh, the top positions. The fact is that taking over the top positions in our company is not a problem. The problem is, do we have enough policies to ensure that Singaporeans have a fair treatment? Today, I point out again that for the longest time, why the government had allowed it the wage disadvantage against the Singaporeans. With that, obviously, the employers would favour the foreigners over the Singaporeans a lot more. And during my maiden speech, I brought up the issue of the CEO of DBS Bank, not because it was meant to be a personal attack, but I'm trying to emphasise that why is there no succession planning again being done over the course of the 20 years? Okay. And recently, another of our local bank has employed another foreigner to be the CEO. So what is MAS doing? In my maiden speech, I have said that during my time, in the 80s and the 90s, localization is almost a must. Okay, in our financial sector. Today, it is not, don't seem to be even a KPI in the MAS official, or the MAS official. So that is what ESP and I are concerned about, the rebalancing. And we have to do the rebalancing as soon as possible and as fast as possible. Mr. Speaker, PSP is entitled to take that position and a segment of Singaporeans will in fact support that position. And this is part and parcel of having diversity of views in the chamber. But I thought that I should just register that the government has a different view, which is that this is a difficult balancing act. We're constantly working on it and that we will try our best to manage, do well, to build a strong Singaporean core in order to benefit Singaporeans for the long run. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Leong and I had this exchange when we had, uh, during the motion of thanks to the President's address, and I gave a full speech uh, recorded in the Hansard, uh, all the efforts that MAS has taken all these years and decades, opening up Singapore, establishing ourselves as a financial hub, creating so many more jobs, allowing so many of our young now to go to university, good education, enter the financial sector, how universities have now become a very good hunting ground for financial sectors to hire very good talent and they know that Singaporeans are able to do the job and how Singaporeans are also now, because we are now a regional and international hub, are now able to take up international roles overseas in other financial centres around the world and then holding our own. But competition is tougher. But of course, we always wish there's a menu that say we get all the jobs, but yet no competition. But I'm sorry, there's no such menu. The menu is open up more competition, but we build capabilities and we can seize more opportunities. All this we've gone through during the debate on the motion on the president's address. So I'm a little bit disturbed when I hear Mr. Leong grandstanding, saying that all this building up, growing our own timber, localization, building our own talent is not in MES's KPI. I think that is grossly unfair and ignores everything that we have discussed earlier. Thank you, Minister, for uh, your, your comments. Um, okay, I think uh, I, I uh, uh, want to uh, apologize for the fact that, uh, yeah, maybe MES do have the KPIs. But 
I think the KPIs are not showing enough results. Okay, even the uh, data that we have quoted in the, uh, your clarification uh, in September last year, I think we still, uh, I and I think a lot of Singaporeans still have doubts. That, like for example, the senior executive positions in the retail banking sector in Singapore, why should there still be 30 to 40 percent of foreigners? After all, retail banking is about our own domestic market, right? So can't it be 80 percent, 90 percent? Are we satisfied with a 60, 70 percent percentage, for example? Okay. Secondly, I would also like to pose a question related to my speech today. Okay. Has the government created a wage disadvantage by not charging, not having the foreigners as contribute to CPF in Singapore? Why 30 percent of retail bank managers are still foreigners? Because we are a global financial centre, but we are 70 percent and a much larger pie with a larger share. But that is the essence of being an open and an international financial sector. So I, I think I also come to the same conclusion as MOS Gan Xiao Huang, that actually the PSP position is that I think you want Singapore to close up and protect the jobs, which is fine. It's entitled to that view, but I think the government and MAS has a different view. But thank you for the apology, and, and we understand and apology accepted. Associate so Professor James Lim. Uh, speaker, let me have my last say. Uh, no, we are moving on. Thank you. I think enough was said. <laughs>